Welcome back guys, JimmyJewels153 back with another Dreams Logic tutorial. Today we'll be going over the Signal Manipulator. The Signal Manipulator is very handy and lets you change signals based on what settings you've changed from the tweak menu. On the face of the gadget, you've got a visual representation of the signals the gadget is receiving and what it's outputting. The input signal is shown on the left and the output is shown on the right. You'll see here that with no settings modified, it just outputs the exact signal that it's receiving. Up the top of the tweak menu, we've got the input and output where you plug in the other gadgets. And just beneath this, we've got the remapper mode. The first option is the smoothing only option, which only lets us smooth the rise and the fall of the output signal with the two output smoothing sliders underneath the modes here. The next option is Pulse on Input, which turns a solid signal into a pulse. So when the gadget receives a 100% signal, it will pulse the gadget that's connected to the output. You don't always see the pulse here because the game is running at 60 frames per second and the video is only 30 frames a second, so it misses the pulse frame sometimes, but you'd see it properly on the PS4 itself. The next is Invert Input, which just inverts the input it's receiving, as you can see on the face of the gadget there. Finally is the Custom Remapping option, which I haven't had too much time to play with just yet, but it lets you manually define the output depending on what input you're receiving. I'll be doing a separate video on this when Early Access comes out. So we'll change our remap mode back to Smoothing Only again, and we'll increase the Smooth Rise bar straight under this. You'll see now that the output signal takes longer to increase than our input signal. If we increase the smooth fall bar, it will not drop straight to 0% when the input signal stops, but instead take an amount of time to fall based on what you've got the slider set to. Finally is the freeze output option. This is very handy if you have a varying signal and you want to freeze that signal output at a specific time. An example of when you might use this is if you were making a cruise control for a car, where you wanted it to maintain a certain speed without you having to do anything. You could get the car up to speed, then freeze the speed going into the signal manipulator. The car would then maintain that speed until you unfroze the signal again. Finally, down the bottom is the bypass option, which when enabled will ignore the settings and output the signal it's receiving. That's all for this one guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.